What's good, everyone? This is your favorite YouTube music producer artist kind of thing. And in this video, I'm going to be showing how I make my ambient virtual type beats from scratch. Um, I have this beat pulled up right here that I made not too long ago, probably like 30 minutes ago. And I really liked it. And I figured I'd share it with you guys. If you see that there's a piano in my bed, it's because I'm cleaning my room. And yeah, I just have stuff everywhere. But um, let me show you how I made this beat really quickly. And yeah, I'm gonna play it so you guys can hear it and then I'm gonna jump into the deconstruction. Well, a um, few things I'd like to say. If you watch any of my live streams, you know that I don't really like to make beats using MIDI, like uh, with the actual patterns, but I really like this beat and I just like made it literally on the project of the loop. So um, I'm gonna actually show the loop by itself, how I made everything. And then I'm gonna like go into every single piece. So the entire loop would sound like this. Well, it doesn't sound, but it should, but it doesn't sound. So it's a really simple loop. I really like how it sounds. It's kind of like almost nostalgic, you know? It has this like emotional vibe to it that I really like. And this MIDI right here that I have on the main plug was made by Prod Hector, one of my biggest collaborators. And, you know, shout out to him. You should definitely follow him. He has some crazy stuff. So first things first, the first thing that I made in this beat um, was this plug right here. And it sounds like this. There's not none effects to it. It's literally running by itself. It's a one shot and it, it sounds like this. I Something that I do every single time that I work with one shots is playing with the envelope like this. You know, I usually put the hold on top, like to the maximum and I play with the decay, the sustain and the release. So it doesn't like, the note doesn't end abruptly here, you know, and it has some like continuity to it. Something I've been doing a lot recently is working with one shots. I found it that it's the most like comfortable way for me to work. I've been making my own one shots. I have like hundreds of them by now. And I just feel like it's more comfortable. Like I have, sounds already pre-selected that I can work on and it's just like less of a hassle, you know? So this plug is called the Plug Edited. It's from my one shot kit that I released today. It's 91 shots, it's 25 bucks. And if you want it link down in the description, it's ideal for these kinds of feats like ambient, virtual and anything of that sort. It's a bunch of basses, keys, leads, uh, pads, plugs. It, it even has some strings, you know? Uh, but yeah. So the first thing that I did was this plug right here. And there's not that much to it, you know? Um, I hopped onto the key right here. So when you're making these uh, kind of like emotional, virtual, ambient type melodies, um, you usually keep it pretty simple. Like you need to think, something that I've come to realize recently is that the less overwhelming a beat feels, the more chances you have of a rapper hopping on it you know it's cool to make beats with a bunch of layers that sound really complex but you don't really need all that and you need to think of the like the voice of the rapper as another instrument that will be over your beat so you don't want to overdo it so that's why th this melody is super simple 
So once I had this block, the first thing that I laid down was a base. And adding a base usually helps me a lot to understand the direction that the melody is going. It gives me a vibe. It uh, helps me understand where I'll be taking things. So I layer down these two bases from my one shot kit. This one, just following the root notes. And this other bass, which I EQ'd. I really like the high pitch accent that I added. So it's kind of just like an effect. So it sounds like this. And you can actually hear the bass throughout the beat because I took it out. But if you were to work on this on a loop, you would hear it, you know? So once I had these three elements, I already knew where I would take the melody. So the next thing was to add a lead or something of that sort, you know, like a counter melody. And I added this little key which is in triplets, but it's not in triplets. This is something that I've been doing a lot recently where I'll like make triplets on a melody, like right here, you know, this is in one third. But then here I flip it and it's not really a triplet, you know, like this is like a triplet right here. But if it was a triplet, it would sound like this. But it sounds like this. And it gives the melody more bounce than if it wasn't like one third if that makes sense you know just play with the notes a little bit and just draw whatever melody makes sense to you you know and it's this melody that repeats itself and i feel like that key that also places a lead or a pluck really consolidates the whole thing together I added this other lead almost as like a string or something that sounds very in the background, it's barely noticeable. And it sounds like this. It's almost like ambience, you know? I added this effect. It's almost like an accent to you. All these sounds that I'm showing right here, all the sounds from the melody, they're like literally raw. I didn't add anything to them and they're all from my one shot kit. So if you like the sounds, you could check it out. The link is in the description. And the last two elements I added to the melody, which as I said, the melody is super simple. In these beats, you don't really wanna overdo it. It's the most important thing is the sound selection. When you have, once you have the sound selection covered up, you're done. And I added this road, which I'm using as a lead again. And one thing that I really like to do in these beats is adding slides to everything. Like add slides to the 808, add slides to the melodies, to the main melody if you want. It sounds cool. So I added this, these little slides. And it's a barely noticeable melody, too. And last but not least, I added this little lead over here that it's muted, but you can see it here. Something I like to do in my melodies is make like really open areas of the beat where you barely have any melodic elements and it's mostly drums and maybe it's this little pluck and this lead right here and it just like i feel like it makes the like beat sound more alive and the rapper's vocal have more presence you know it's this like section of the beat where it's just the vocal and it feels very raw you know and it's this little lead And it just repeats itself. So once I had everything uh, set, the melody, you know, I laid it down, uh, moved some stuff up and down. Basically, you know, if you put every single melodic element like this on your beat, it gets really boring really, really fast. So one thing that is really important is to switch up the melodic elements. You know, add some stuff here, add some stuff there, take out stuff, add stuff, you know. 
uh, because you don't want to blast the same thing to the like listener's ear for three minutes because then they get bored. And the listener, they might not be aware that this lead came in here and that this key came in here and that they came out here, but they will notice that something changed and they'll think, oh, this is new, this is interesting. So it's very, 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 very important. And I, I like emphasis on very important that you switch up your melodies and your sounds. You know, that's why like nothing is playing throughout the entire beat. Like not even the main melody is playing throughout the entire beat. And adding that variety is essential, uh, especially in these kinds of beats. You know, if you're making a piano beat, there's not that much like you cannot reinvent the wheel, you know. But in these kinds of beats, I feel like it's super, 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 super important um, to add variety, take out things, add things. And, you know, once I had all the melody laid down, the first thing that I did was added the clap, everything, the clap. It's like an element that tells you, okay, this is where things are heading. You already have the melody, the melody is made, but the claps puts everything in context. So that's why I always start with my claps. Regular say clap, nothing new. This little hit right here, it's like, it's not heading where it's supposed to hit, but it, 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 it like, it makes the listener question oh what's what's coming now there was a clap supposed to be there oh it's here you know it adds bounds and it gives the rapper more time to like uh hit the beat if that makes sense i really like adding like the last clap of the pattern i really like adding it here i do it in almost every single beat that i make i moved on to the actually before the hi-hats i added all the little like miscella miscellaneous effects like chants snares open hats perks so <laughs> As always, I make all my rolls on one third. So one third step here, and it changes the grid so you can put notes on one third. And of course, now I had to move into the hi-hat. So the hi-hat is super simple, super, super simple. One tip to all producers watching this is that I never start my hi-hats on like the two-step pattern. Like, if you start your hi-hat like this, I feel like it really limits your creativity when it comes to hi-hats because you have this, like, predefined rule on the rhythm of them. So one thing that I do is making them like this. I just, like, draw them in and I add hi-hats where I want them to sound. So... And for these rolls that I have right here, one thing that I've been doing recently is I will just, I want a roll here and I have a note here. So I'll just put a note here and then I'll click Alt A. I open the arpeggiator and I put the time multiplicator right on this knob. I put the range in one and done. So keep in mind that that roll that I made right there is not in one third. If I'm not mistaken, it should be on one fourth step. So we can actually check it right now. Yeah, it's in one fourth step. And I like it way more than in one third step, actually. Like the, the difference is this one. Look, if it was in one third step, it would sound like this. And one, one, uh, one fourth. Like it sounds more spaced out, more chill, not so overwhelming. And that's why I've been doing my rolls like this. And you save a lot of time. And very important in these kinds of beats is to not like make your hi-hat stale, you know? Like you want to put it down in pitch right here like this and just play with it, you know? Do not overdo it. Do not like put rows everywhere and every single thing. But don't just play the hi-hat for three minutes in the C note and that's it, you know? Uh, that's why I have these rows over here and stuff. But once I had the main rhythm laid down, which was this one, the thing that I did was literally I just copied and pasted it right here. I took out this roll and then I just copied and pasted it again. And that's why I made this I had. And last thing, of course, 808. So this 808 is a sub from my B1 kit, which is also linked down in the description if you want it. And I basically just copied and pasted the root notes in this thing and just let them sound. Nothing too crazy about the beat, you know, it's just good sound selection 
having uh, like a clear mind, like clear headed direction of where I wanted my beat to head. And I feel like that's very important when you're making these kinds of beats. You know, you need to sit down and think, okay, I want this beat to sound like this. Okay, I need to use these kinds of sounds and direct my beat in this direction, you know? Uh, so making these kinds of beats, like these virtual beats that have been really popping up, I really like them. Actually, I find them very interesting to make, very fun to make. Especially if you have the right sounds, they're very easy to make. So that was it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hadn't really make a video on how to make virtual type melodies type stuff. So I hope this like covers for that area. And yeah, all the all the sounds that I'm using, all the melodic components I'm using are from my Enigma one shot kit that just dropped today. It's 25 bucks, 91 shots. Link down in the description. Best uh, one shot kit you'll get for your money's worth. And if you're making these kinds of beats, either like new jazz or glow or um, virtual type melodies, like this one shot is right for you, bro. It has all the sounds you need. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm coming back to YouTube full force. Um, I started university. You know, if, if you're not like a frequent watcher of this video, you can just click it off right now. I'm just yapping now. But um, I started university in March, but I'm, I'm getting like an actual work schedule. I'm trying to put out two or three videos every week. So, you know, if you want to see more frequent content, you just, just subscribe, bro. It's free. I'm not charging you to subscribe, but you should subscribe. We make real cool stuff in this channel. So, yeah, thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. Um, it's Tuesday right now, so probably Friday. So, yeah, I hope to see you soon. And thank you for passing by. Have a good night.